Let's talk more about Tom. What have you learned from him, apart, apart from the throat stuff that he was very helpful for? But when you did Mama Told Me Not To Come, you did a lot of, you, you shot the video, well, you recorded it in Britain, you shot the video yeah. in Las Vegas, and then you promoted it in, in various territories. What yeah. did you learn from him spending that time with him? The first time I, I met him was in a pub in Harrow Road, I think. I just remember him telling me and Stuart stories for about three and a half hours. Yeah. I couldn't believe the storytelling ability, really, from Morecambe and Wise right the way up to Frank Sinatra. We were just throwing names at him, and he had an anecdote for every single name we threw at him. He's and got just an amazing thought... ability to tell a story that he's told yes. many times as if it's the first time. Like a stand-up comedian. I love Elvis, so I've always, whenever I see him, yeah. I ask him something about Elvis. And I, when we did the uh, video for... Um, uh, Islands in the Stream, again in Las Vegas. Mm. How strange. We have both filmed videos with him in Las Vegas. What are the chances hey. of that? I know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we're in the back of a car. And I said, do you have any stories about Elvis that you don't tell in public? And he went, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was in the shower after the show. And I said, <laughs> oh, I, yeah. 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 I, I said, oh, I've heard this one, right? And he said, <laughs> you haven't heard the ending. <laughs> <laughs> And he told me, he told me the story, and there was an ending I hadn't heard. I have since heard him tell that ending in public, but but at that point there was a little, there was a bit at the end that was a little extra. But it's just uh, the director's cut. A, it's just uh, just a delight. But did you sort of, when you you would go round with him and you'd be doing promo on different shows, were you watching him and like picking things up? Or I used to love the way you would do, you know, the chills and fever and those kinds of vocals, you know. Uh, doing the actual vocal with him, it was kind of, well, I was only, what was I, 22, 23 maybe. And I guess at the time I was young enough to just have enough confidence to stand in a room with somebody like that without worrying about it too much. Doing it now, I'd probably be completely different. Yeah. Um, but we sang it two, three times and we went back in the control room and he, he looked at the engineer and he said, uh, you know, take the reverb off a bit and take the compressor down a bit. He said, uh, he said it sounds good. He said, you want Chinese? <laughs> And the next thing I knew, we were in Baker Street having a Chinese uh, meal. I used to sit next to him in dinners all the time, like in Vegas, and he would he would break the, uh, the shells off the prawns and stuff and put them on my plate, and he'd go, you have that? He said, yeah, you can eat. He said, and there's nothing of you. He said, you don't stop eating. And he just kept giving me his food. <laughs> what I, I used to love watching him. You know when you get off a plane and you have to get those little buses into the airport? It, I was fascinated just watching him standing on one of those buses holding on the thing with his bag. I just thought, that's... I didn't think I'd ever see my life, you know. We did this uh, Comet Relief record, uh, Islands in the Stream, and we did a little bit of promotion for it then. He flew over for that, so we did a few things. And then we had a dinner one night, and uh, Thomas sat there, big circular table, and my wife was sat on one side of him, and Ruth Jones. And I always remember, he ordered oysters to start, but he had 12 of them. Really? I mean, you wouldn't order 12 oysters, would you? <laughs> no. I wouldn't order 12. I might have six and maybe not have the sixth. So he gets he gets this big, massive thing of 12 voices, and he looked like a silverback gorilla, you know, like the, the head <laughs> of the whoop or the flange. And you know they give you the, the, um, the lemon, and it's in a kind of muslin cloth, and you can squeeze yeah, the lemon. Yeah. Well, the way he squeezed that lemon, he, he went, he went... <sighs> And I just, sat, <laughs> I just sat there going, bloody hell. I'd done his, um, uh, in the Grosvenor Hotel, I had to sing for him when they did Man of the Year for him. And that was quite surreal because I'd be looking out at him and Mark would give me a few of the songs he used to play as a kid. And because um, I didn't know he played the guitar, Tom. Right, yeah. yeah. And, um, but he was sat there, you know, you had Tim Burton there, Helen Bonner Carter. So it was quite strange looking out at them lot. And then when we went back to the, to the hotel that night, he was... He was sitting in the room and he was playing all these old songs, all these old Elvis songs on the guitar. Really? And, and singing. Yeah, it was amazing. And then we brought him on when we had done Reading Festival. Yeah. he'd never really played to festivals before. Right. That was great because when he walked on in Reading, in Yonko, and, and we started, I mean, the crowd went ballistic and they just all started jumping up and down. It was like a sea of kids doing this. Yeah, yeah. And you could see his face. He was amazing, you know. Did he love it? Yeah, he loved it. It was a great idea, actually. So he, he did some good stuff, man. 